There's a Voltaire quote that goes something like, judge a man by his questions, not by his answers. Hey, I'm Dr. Sabrina Solt, and today I want to just quickly chat with you guys about asking the right questions when you're going in for a stem cell treatment or even considering one. Now, stem cell therapy has become extraordinarily popular in the last few years, and most recently even more popular with Tony Robbins' new book, Life Force, where he dives into some of the different things that they're using stem cell therapy for. And over the years of clinical practice, one of the things that I've noticed is the patients that actually end up going through with the therapy, getting really great results are the ones that asked the best questions initially. Now, you're gonna think I'm a little bit crazy because I actually don't believe that the right questions in this regard have anything to do with stem cell science, truthfully. Uh, for the most part, people don't have enough basic knowledge in the sciences to be able to actually understand the nuances of these questions. And there's unfortunately plenty of sites out there that will list things like, hey, make sure you're asking your doctor these questions. And a lot of them just have to do with basic science. And honestly, a lot of the time when you're doing a consultation with a doctor about around this stuff, you're limited in time. You might have 20 or 30 minutes with them to decide if this is something that you're going to go through with. To not utilize those 20 minutes effectively, which basically means how can I use these 20 minutes to understand how this is going to benefit me instead of asking generalized questions is really going to set you up for not being able to make an informed decision based on whether or not this is something that you should go through with. And that's the entire idea of doing a consultation is creating this relationship between you and the provider where you get to make an informed choice on, is this right for me? Now, if this was me going into a procedure and I have had surgical procedures before, of course, I want to know things about like the doctor's experience, what sort of um, what sort of things that they treated in the past, what have outcomes been like for their other patients. But you know, if I'm going in for something like an endoscopy, I don't want to necessarily get in the weeds about okay, what sort of cellular type changes are you looking for in my esophagus? Or if I'm going in for a colonoscopy, I'm not going to ask about oh, how do you how exactly do you measure those polyps to be able to tell if it's cancerous or not? I want to know are you going to be taking a gentle approach? What do you do when something like that is found? Right? How is it going to apply to me? So some of them are, I guess, better questions to be asking your provider, of course their experience, what sort of things they've treated in the past, what their track record is, how do they even, uh, how do they even gather their statistics regarding their uh, successes, right? There's no one way to actually gather great data across a subset of patients who are all very, very unique. So asking your doctor, how do you figure out if somebody's been a success or not? And then asking them, of course, well, how do you troubleshoot? So. One of the red flags that I see in this in the stem cell therapy world right now is a lot of clinics popping up that only offer one single modality of regenerative medicine, and that's all that they give to you as an option. Uh, asking about what other what other sources of uh, regener regeneration do they offer? Are they doing all the different types that are possibly available so that they can customize a treatment plan specific to you? I think that that's really important. Again, emphasizing that this is something that needs to be pertinent to your specific case. And then of course, you just wanna make sure that you are going to be getting something that, for lack of a better term, is going to jive with you and your budget. Now, I personally know some doctors that, you know, no longer practicing or, you know, transitioned out of care, where they would price things at an extraordinary level uh, for, for no reason. And I think that this is really quite predatory, um, and it's it's really frustrating to see as another provider. Uh, yes, stem cell therapy can have a higher price tag simply because it is such a specific type of training. Not only does your provider have to go through their regular medical school training, there is often hundreds of hours of additional training specifically in stem cell science, and then of course how to do those procedures. So not only do they need to be a pretty great doctor, they have to be well versed in stem cell therapy, and then a lot of the time we're actually doing injections throughout the musculoskeletal system. So they have to be a skilled injector on top of that, plus not only skilled at injections, but also somewhat skilled at using some sort of image guidance, whether it's ultrasound or a fluoroscopy unit. So again, the combinations of all these skill sets that your doctor has to gather over many, many, many years uh, does add a little bit of a higher price tag to it, but it should not be something equivalent to say a brand new car, for example. 
And again, this also could depend on where you're going. Uh, I know a lot of overseas places will have these much higher price tags, but they might be doing something different than what we have currently clinically available in the United States. So basically what I wanna do is encourage you is when you actually go to see your provider and you're curious about what's actually happening, spend less time asking the questions that you've been told to ask about the science and all that stuff that really isn't gonna actually help you make an informed decision about what this procedure means for you and your condition and your outcomes. The provider should be speaking exactly to your case, right? Should be less in the weeds about the actual nuances that are happening behind the scenes that's just something that doesn't need to be discussed. Unless, of course, you have a true interest in it. If you are someone who's, say, um, in medical school or pursuing a bachelor's of biology or even biochemistry or something like that or, or pre-med, and you actually are interested in the science, cool, great conversation to have. But save that for after you have figured out does this apply to me? Is this going to be a great fit for me and my concerns? And what is my life going to look like on the other side of this treatment? Those should be the things that your provider should be able to explain to you really, really easily. And in such a way that you come away from that conversation thinking, yes, this is absolutely for me or no, this isn't. And that is another thing that I want to mention as well. Your provider should be really, really straightforward with you if you are not a great candidate for this treatment. Uh, I turn away people semi-frequently. Uh, thankfully, we have a really great screening process where you almost have to do a, an application to get the consultation scheduled. Because again, not everybody is gonna be a great candidate for this. And I really want to feel confident behind the procedures that I put my name behind, right? I want everybody who came to say, that says, hey, I went to go see Dr. Soul for this, to have great results so that people understand that I'm not only working, you know, in integrity, but that I understand how to apply these to these patients with this, this broad subset of different conditions and whatnot. So I hope this was helpful. And if you guys want, you are welcome to schedule a consultation with me. If you are considering stem cell therapy, I will put the link down in the description. All right. Have a great day.